Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, I'd like to respond to a comment which we've recently received here on the channel. One viewer angrily pointed out in German that I should please stop pronouncing German lens names in English and instead um, pronounce them as a German native speaker in the proper German way. The person wrote um, in German, obviously, um, and I'm trying to translate here, Quote, why do you pronounce German lens names with wrong English pronunciation? Samilak, Spyogon, that is ridiculous. The fact that this channel is in English is no reason at all to pronounce names incorrectly. On the contrary, you would do your English-speaking viewers a much better service if you as a German native speaker would pronounce historical lens names correctly instead of confirming their wrong pronunciation. And while this kind of comment um, hurts me quite a bit as a sensitive person, and while it was also not phrased in um, a particularly nice way, I do believe it would be interesting to hear how Schneider Kruzner and all the other German lens names and pronunciations that you hear out there are actually pronounced. So let's dive in there. So let's get started. Karl Zeiss. Karl Zeiss. For non German speakers, the Z and the double S is a little bit difficult to pronounce. Um, keep it short, try to keep it short. So it's just Karl Zeiss. Schneider Kreuznach. Schneider Kreuznach. So for non-German speakers here, the sh in the beginning is a little bit difficult and also the oi, um, just think of the English toy um, uh, as a, to build it a little bit of a bridge. So it's Schneider Kreuznach. Vogtländer. Vogtländer. For non-German speakers, this is a little bit difficult because of the umlaut, the er at the end, so Vogtländer, and also because the oi combination is not really pronounced as you would expect, so it's not Vogtländer or, or something similar, it's more Vogtländer in German. Rollei. Rollei. Um, most people call it Rolli or something similar to that. Um, that is not correct, so it's just an I at the end, very similar to the English I. Just call it Rollei, pretty straightforward. Rollei. Rollei, Werke, Franke und Heidegger. Rollei, Werke, Franke und Heidegger. This is, of course, a bit more difficult, um, and the, the brand names of the very traditional manufacturer, or one of the um, traditional brand names of the manufacturer of the Rollei Flex cameras. Um, until today, you can um, see that in the, um, on, the, on the top plate, basically, of these cameras of some Rollei Flexes, you can see Franke und Heidegger. Um, so um, it's, it, it's easy to pronounce. Rollei, Werke, Franke und Heidegger. Rodenstock. Rodenstock. For non-German speakers, the a little bit longer O and ST combination are a bit difficult here. Think of the ST more like a sh um, sound and the O a bit longer, so it's Rodenstock. Adox. Adox. Remarkable for non-German speakers is the pretty short A in the beginning and then a short O at the end, so it's just adox, not adox or something similar, just keep it short, adox. Aqua. Aqua. Again, pretty short A's and the G-F combination is best thought of as a very soft G and then a, something that's more resembling an English V, so aqua. Plaubel. Plaubel. The Plaubel Machina, as it's often called, um, is actually called Plaubel, um, which was just a, a name of somebody um, founding that company. And um, in, in German, it's maybe a bit difficult, for non-Germans, because it's a bit difficult to pronounce that AU combination, so that Au, Plaubel, and also the very short E at the end is a bit, um, it's a bit difficult because it's actually an E in there, so Plaubel. Then now a very important one, Leica. Lights, Kamera, Wetzler. Lights, Kamera, Wetzler. This is of course very important and a very well-known abbreviation. Leica stands for Lights, Kamera. 
And until today, as you know, you can choose your digital M bodies that you can buy with or without inscription on the top plate. And if you want the inscription, it always says Leitz Wetzler. So this is really important to pronounce correctly if, if you're really curious about Leica. Um, the tr tricky part here is the TZ combination. So that's Leitz Wetzler in both word, uh, words and also maybe the, the AR at the end of Wetzler. So Leitz Kamera Wetzler. Related to that, of course, all the lens names in the Leica lineup. Um, uh, let's give it a try first. Noctilux, Zumilux, Zumicron, Zumaron, Elmar, Elmarit, Tamba und Telüt. Noctilux, Zumilux, Zumicron, Zumaron, Elmar, Elmarit, Tamba und Telüt. While well, technically not German, but uh, derived from Latin, um, the, this is the correct pronunciation or the requested German pronunciation of Leica's lens lineup. Um, Minox. Minox. The short me in the beginning is very similar to the English me and the ox at the end is like the English word ox, so like the animal. So it's pretty straightforward, Minox. Then the same um, story for the Carl Zeiss lenses. Um, here, um, let's pronounce them first. Planar, Tessa, Sonar, Distagon, Biogon. Planar, Tessa, Sona, Distagon, Biogon. All the typical Carl Zeiss lens names here, um, again with the German pronunciation, um, they mostly derive or were created by the German, famous German lens designer Paul Rudolph, who worked for Carl Zeiss. Um, and think of long A's and O's when you pronounce these names. Now to wrap things up, three um, German manu manufacturers, camera manufacturers or lens manufacturers from the former um, German Democratic Republic, so Eastern Germany before the reunification. Praktika is the first one, Praktika, um, a company from Dresden um, and there are millions of pra Praktika cameras out there. Exacta, same story, um, a camera manufacturer from uh, Dresden um, during the GDR period, um, notably is the German K at the end, Exacta. Meyer Optik Görlitz, Meyer Optik Görlitz. A company famous for its amazing lens designs that was originally founded in 1896. Um, in 1920, they started to collaborate with Paul Rudolf, so the Carl Zeiss lens designer, and even got access to his patents. And that was, of course, um, a great uh, jump start for them. And until today, they are famous for uh, great lens designs. Meyer Optik Görlitz. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this somewhat different episode of Analog Insights and learned a bit about the correct pronunciation, the German pronunciation of certain German camera brands and lens manufacturers. If you did, please remember to like this video and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.